This is my wife, Andrea, a mother of four and an absolute beast when it comes to designing and building custom furniture. And in this video, we're showing you the entire process of one of her most industrious builds to date, a giant glass front bookcase that we're hoping will become a family heirloom. So buckle up and join us for the adventures of my DIY wife and her non-handy husband. Before we get started, we want to say thanks to Ethos for sponsoring today's video. We wanted to take a minute to talk to you about life insurance. Life insurance is one of those topics that we don't always discuss because death is a sensitive topic. But knowing your options and being prepared for the worst case scenario is smart. Most of you know we have four kids and if something were ever to happen to either one of us, we want to do whatever we can to make sure there's not a financial burden on top of dealing with a huge loss. According to the 2022 Brookings study, it costs about $311,000 to raise a child and that's not even considering college tuition. Having life insurance can help ensure that our kids have financial support if something were to happen to us. In our experience, life insurance has felt a little bit confusing and time consuming sorting through all of the options. Ethos focuses on creating a seamless customer experience with a 100% online application process. By eliminating medical exams and blood tests, Ethos is able to help people get coverage in minutes instead of weeks, in most cases getting coverage in the same day. It only took us a few seconds to receive a quote, you simply answer a few medical questions online. Everything was really straightforward and not intimidating. One of the top reasons people don't get life insurance is they think that it's too expensive, but with as little as $10 a month, you can protect your family. That is pretty Pretty much the cost of one dinner out to eat. We decided to get life insurance when we were still in our 20s because according to Investopedia, life insurance premiums increase in cost by 8 to 10% each year you wait, with that number increasing to 9 to 12% more each year after you turn 50. With Ethos's easy and fast application process, there really is no reason to wait. So if you're interested in learning more about Ethos or you're interested in getting your free life insurance quote, be sure to click our link in the description below. Oh yeah. New project. New day. New project. New week. New project. Come on, big boy! You know it's a big project when we're taking seats out of the minivan. I mean, it's a huge project. Three, two, one, pull! Magic. All right, let's go. Go, man. And of course, with every new project, you've got to start off with a trip to the home improvement store. A Lowe's trip, a Lowe's trip. Every single day, it's a Lowe's trip. Hey, babe, park in the pro spot. This is you, you're a pro. Or are we gonna go inside yes. or are you just gonna look at your drawing all day? I am huh? like, well, that drawing I in got your purse. too many tabs. Get that drawing in your purse. Too many tabs open in my brain today. Can you smell that? Do you smell what the barbecue rock is cooking? Hey, 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 you need to take it easy. We started sifting through all of the red oak one by twos, but weren't having much luck finding boards that were straight enough. This one's just a little bit bent, you know, not bad or anything, just warped. And we are a boarding mission here, looking for greener pastures. Sometimes it doesn't matter if they're a little bit warped, but like for the frame around the glass door, I need it really straight. So we decided to grab the one by twos at a different store and moved on to getting three quarter inch red oak plywood. That's quite a list. Looking for a Lowe's employee, one that can run the saw. Got him. Since I had already decided on the depth of the cabinet, I went ahead and had them rip down all of the plywood for the size of the cabinet boxes, the shelves, and then we'll use the scrap pieces to make the drawer boxes. But even after all of that, Andrea decided that she didn't have enough wood. More wood? Are you serious? The last thing on my list was quarter inch plywood to use for the back of the cabinets and the bottom of the drawers. And if you're going to be unloading a bunch of wood, you might as well have a good time doing it. Not many people will dare to unload a load like this into the back of a minivan, but we will. I have to scoot your chair up. Yeah. This is never a good sign. Now 
now for the real test. Oh yeah, we're good. Moment of truth. Yeah, baby! All right, let's get on in here. It's perfect, isn't it? I'm so squished in here, dude. I can't even reach my seatbelt. Okay. I got it. I got it. What's so funny over there? Your head. What about it? It's really a beautiful day out, isn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna pee my pants. All right, let's unload this load. Once we finished unloading our initial round of materials, we decided to grab an early lunch and then go on the hunt for some straight boards. All right, where to now? Food and caffeine. How about we uh, move this back a little bit so, you know, a human could sit in there. Is that Look at up? this. Look at this. It's so luxurious up here. Back it out, back it out. Where are we going again? McCoy's! We thought we got caught in the store, but that was actually just, just a friend. friend. They were just messing with us. Unfortunately, store number two didn't have the boards that we needed either. These are like literal two inches wide. I don't want to rip down that many boards either. We should probably go to Home Depot. You gotta be kidding me. And we're back. On the road again. But I'm ding damn, but I didn't jump down fast enough. So I'm not dead, my friend. What does it say again? I don't know. I don't either. I'm sorry, Willie. Let's do it all over again. Third stop in a home improvement store in one day. Mm-hmm. What do you have to say about that? I'm tired. <laughs> I hope they have what we need. That's what I have to say. All right, so do they have it or not? I don't know if they have enough. Give it the wink. Yes. The wink. We're gonna be here all day. Come on. Yeah, Misha, you want me to help you? I feel like one of those ice cutters on Frozen, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> break it, just break it. Oh, that's cool. the one we want. Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, let me get in my spot here. Whoa! Well, we finally accomplished the mission. <laughs> A full day of buying supplies. And we're back. I'm tired. I'm so tired. Too. We're gonna unload this before we get our kids, and then that's it for today. That's it for today. <laughs> She wrote. 
Here we are, back at it again. All right, so after buying all of our supplies for this project, we actually took a week off for the holidays to be with family, and we started that week by going camping, so there's camping gear still everywhere, but we are ready to get back to building this piece today. Do you need those gloves for filming, or can I have my gloves back? Uh, yeah, I guess I don't need them. I put them on like thinking I was gonna do something, you know, but then... You did move some splintery wood for me. This does happen sometimes. I do things off of camera and we don't film it. <laughs> so me. just all the people out there that are like, what does he do? I'm always filming. And if not, I'm helping usually move something heavy. <laughs> and there there's nobody here to film when Dean's doing stuff, unless he makes me do it. Which you are notoriously I'm, bad at. I am. <laughs> look, 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 film it, film it, film it, film it. Hey, film it. They can't do it. Well, the only problem with starting a project and then taking a week off before you actually start it is I can't remember what I cut for what <laughs> what I cut for what what I cut for what so now I just have to figure that out before I can actually start making cuts and putting it together that's all the pieces for my this part <laughs> oh that part perfect should I kind of explain what I'm doing nope all right, so I just pulled out all of the boards that I had ripped down to make the main part of my boxes. And since my whole unit is gonna be about six feet wide, I'm gonna make two of these giant boxes. They're pretty simple. I'm just gonna cut them to the correct height and the width. Each one will be three feet wide since I want my whole unit to be six feet wide. And then the whole thing is 88 inches tall. And I had them rip those down to about 17 inches so that after I put my face frames on, it'll be a little bit over 18, in or yeah, about 18 inches. I'm doing really good on this today. All right, let's build some boxes. Let's do it. What's happening? Oh no. Reinsert the lead. Oh, it won't like stay in there oh, though. Oh no. This is tragic. It really is. Oh, oh. in your new cubbies. cubby hole, in your new workbench, you got spare pencils. That's incredible. Oh, look at that. Normally, I'd be going inside having to get another one. Not today. Not today. Could you do this next cut in slow mo? Yes. Let's go slow mo again this time, if you wouldn't mind. You got the skills to pay the bills. <laughs> two down, two to go. Uno mas. Uno mas. All right, so I just cut all of the sides and then I'm gonna cut some shorter pieces that are gonna be the tops of my boxes and then the middle of the boxes. All right guys, I know it just looks like a bunch of wood everywhere, but trust me, stay tuned. It's gonna turn into something amazing. You've seen Andrea work, you know how this goes. Like Stellar cut. <laughs> Spectacular cut. I feel like this next cut might be one of your greatest cuts of all time. I can just feel it. If you nail this cut, the crowd is probably going to go wild. <laughs> Last piece. <laughs> the crowd is going absolutely wild over your cuts today, babe. It's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, what are you doing down here now? The crowd wants to know. Getting my router out, but it's stuck. 
I think my favorite part of the new workbench is having all the stuff that I use the most often in a specific place so when I need it, like my router and my router bits, I know exactly where it is. Because usually that process goes something like this. Hey, do you know where my router is? <laughs> uh, I don't use that router, but I'll attempt to look for it in our messy garage. Okay. Uh, I couldn't find it in the messy garage. Okay, I'll just go look for it. I don't send you to look 30 for minutes tools. later, yeah, right. we have the router. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I put a little quarter inch straight bit on my router and I'm going to route a little groove on the back side of all of these boards. So once it's assembled, I can slide in my quarter inch plywood for the backing of my cabinet. And you've seen me do this before whenever we built cabinets for the big house project that we were working on over the summer, but this is basically the same process. What's not to love about that sound, you know? How many more, Brain? I've got to do all the long boards still, so not even halfway. I'm really wishing I would have bought a new router bit. I didn't realize mine was a little dull, so it's slow. There's always time for a trip to Lowe's, babe. I feel like it would be faster to go to Lowe's. This is like painfully slow. Throw on that lame Lowe's trip song and let's go, baby. A Lowe's trip, a Lowe's trip. Every single day it's a Lowe's trip. All right, am I going in with you? Is, is that legal or are you leaving me in the car? You can go in with me. Excellent. As long as you leave that big beefy camera in the car. Perfect. Thank Back you so up. much. Yep. Mm -hmm. That guy is an absolute legend. Oh, you have got it. Let's do the slow mo walk. Is this? Left my card in the car. Ready to roll. And we're back. Once we got back, I changed out my router bit and was ready to finish up routing the back side of all of these boards. All right, and you ready to do that for the next yes. hour or so? Well, hopefully it's gonna take a whole lot less time and see how this thing works. Let's test this bad boy out. Is that it? Yep. Probably went like 10 times faster. Moral of the story, just don't use old router bits, especially when you're trying to route out a groove like that. Moral of the story, sharpen your ax for 10 minutes and chop for one minute as opposed to chopping for 30 minutes. I don't, you know. You <laughs> that know, sounded like the start of a you, real saying, a yeah, real wise you, saying there. Did you make that up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take credit for it. You ready? Ready, Freddy. You ready? Let's see your ready? moves. Let's see ready? your moves. Hey, dude, that hit me in the head. I know. You're a jerko. You're a jerko. <laughs> Here, ready? Ready? No, I didn't kick it. I just you ready? It. You ready? <laughs> I just flicked it at you. I didn't kick Whatever. it <laughs> right off the noggin. Because my space is 36 inches, and then I'll have a little bit of. Oh no, it's not going to be a full. I have no idea what she's talking about, but it sounds very complicated. I feel like I'm going to make a mistake. <laughs> Let's not do that. Normally I would build like the whole, you know, cabinet and then build my drawer boxes so I can double check my measurements. This is fine. I just have to make sure I'm thinking through it all. But we only have a little bit of time today. So rather than getting started on building the really big part and then having to stop that for the weekend, we're going to start doing the drawer boxes because that is kind of more bite-sized, manageable, you know, can easily put it back in the garage. 
So I just have to double check that I'm getting my sizes right because I'm doing inset drawer fronts. Basically, once you have your opening, it's pretty easy. I've got full extension, soft closed drawer slides. They're like the ball bearing kind. To figure out how wide to build your drawer box, you just need to know how big your opening is and then you build your box to be an inch less than your opening. So I just gotta make sure I know how big my opening is. That sounds uh, pretty technical. I'm gonna leave it up to you, okay? <laughs> don't distract me. I'm gonna stay behind the camera. <laughs> hey, don't distract me or I'll blame it on you if I make a mistake. You've been known to do that before. Ooh. I did it on the wrong part. It's your fault. Ooh. Shoot. I don't know that I'm gonna have enough boards. That would be an issue. All right, so before we start making cuts, these are about nine and a half inches tall and my drawer fronts I already have cut because we got them all of this ripped down at Home Depot or Lowe's, whatever store we went to. My drawer fronts are 14 inches tall so when I planned out my cuts on the plywood I just planned it to where whatever remnant I had would be the size for my drawer boxes because really they can be whatever height I want as long as it's less than 14 inches which is my drawer fronts. So I have all of the sides of my drawer boxes cut. I'm going to use my router with the straight bit on it again, just like I did on the side panels so that I can cut my quarter inch plywood and then slide that into the bottom of the drawers for the bottoms. This is just my favorite way to put drawers together. You can do it other ways. You can use a thicker piece on the bottom and use pocket holes or you can staple something to the bottom, but this seems to be strong and adds some stability. I'm gonna go ahead and route on one edge of all 16 of my boards. <laughs> The last thing I'm gonna do today before calling it quits is add pocket holes on the backs of all of my long boards because those will be the front and the back of my drawers. That way when we come back to this project next week we'll be ready to start assembling these. Well, after I cut all the plywood. We'll be almost ready to start assembling but it still feels like a good little chunk that we got done today. We're back in the game. We're back. We're back after a long break. Oh, it's so nice outside. It's a good day to work out here. Mm. You gotta go get some stuff at Lowe's. Oh, am I driving? You are. We've had a break. I don't drive when we're not filming. <laughs> yeah, we're out of practice, man. Some Christmas goodies left we over. We did. That's what happens, kids, when you don't clean your stuff out of the car. Uh-oh! Oh. <laughs> yes. Next time, kids, make sure you get your stuff out of the car or we'll eat it. All right, where are we going first? Lowe's. Oh! This is our first trip to Lowe's for the year. Oh, this is a momentous occasion, babe. First trip to Lowe's in the new year. Oh, oh we're here. So cold. Oh, sorry. Look at all those supplies. Hey, drive by the sign. I know you love it. Da -da. Park this bad boy. First Lowe's trip of the new year, huh? What a day. Oh, she's already getting away from me. We are right back to normal. I am chasing Andrea once again. Jeez, hammers for days. Babe, mallets for days, huh? Among other things, I decided to use some Christmas money and get a new, more powerful router because this project has quite a bit of routing and I know that some of our upcoming projects do as well. 
Forget that basket. You got a Dean. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, where okay. are we going now? Home Depot. What? <laughs> Home Depot. I know. Feels like we're cheating on Lowe's. Hey, Lowe's isn't sponsoring us yet. If they want to sponsor us, I'll exclusively shop at Home Lowe's. <laughs> Deal. And why are we going to Home Depot if we just left Lowe's? That's my question. Well, I was doing a little math and I was planning on getting some sturdier sawhorses and plywood just to have a good work surface. I usually like to do that for a big project. In doing the math, I realized it would actually be cheaper just to buy a stand for our big miter saw and then use my rolling workbench as my work surface which kind of works out because I think the weight of the saw because I don't have a middle support on the table is making it bow just slightly but when I have a really long board I can tell it bothers me a little bit so <laughs> this feels like a good solution I have no idea what you were just talking about but I'll trust you let's let's go to Home Depot let's go there for lunch maybe Hey, hey, could you not oh, shove me while I'm, I'm filming? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. You're shoving me in the back and I'm trying to film a pro Let's shot. Let's go, girl. Got her. Should we go get a cart? <laughs> Assistance. Getting assistance. <laughs> Wait, what the heck is happening here? I'm like a lizard. Hmm. Just soaking up the sun. Think <laughs> go give me a yummy drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to film the rest from back here. Oh, it's like assembly required. That row. That's not what I want. That is a lot of parts. I'm pretty sure building that workbench was simpler than this. box and about halfway into putting this thing together andrea ran into a roadblock all right what happened out there our box was missing the instruction manual and so i was looking at basically the diagram which was not enough help <laughs> i got the wheels on in one bar i found a youtube video this guy does have an instruction manual so i'm gonna follow his 15 minutes you got time for that <laughs> Buy a rolling stand for your miter saw, they said. It'll be easy, they said. <gasps> this is worse than Ikea furniture. And we know about some Ikea furniture. I love Ikea furniture. <laughs> Finally figured out. You ready? Yes. Watch this. Hey. Now I just have to figure out how to attach the miter saw. <laughs> oh, easy peasy. You got it? Yeah, I'm gonna need your help. <laughs> I thought you were done with this, didn't you? Could this be my last time ever carrying the saw? Are you down? Whoa. <gasps> Whoa. 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 What in the world? <laughs> <laughs> Look at me! I can do this saw easy. You are, we should get you doing this now. Uh, I was wondering how this would work with a really heavy saw on it. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. I see. 
<laughs> and finally, after more time than I care to admit, and a little help from some YouTube videos, we got this thing put together. Oh, wow. that's, it was just, it's just really heavy, that's all. I didn't want to like force anything. Just need to put all your body weight. <laughs> Amazing. It's always like too much. Alright, so it's done? It's done. Isn't that about like typical construction? Like a whole hour and a half wasted on something that you didn't expect, but yeah. you kind of have to do it. <laughs> and so we spent an hour and a half getting like back to square one, you know? Well, not back to square one. I am really glad we got it though. It has yeah, it, it has cool. some really cool features. I don't have to worry about it warping. It feels really sturdy. Oh my goodness. It's lower than my workbench, <laughs> which I like for the miter saw. Nice. And now I have my workbench to be a workbench, like just the whole surface. Amazing. I'll probably knock those little cubby things off and then just have a big flat surface. Your glasses are so cool. Yeah, Dean got me these for Christmas. Ooh. You were serious about that chair, huh? Yeah. Dang, I want one too. I kind of I need a footrest though. <laughs> I'm ready. Andrea, for as long as I've known you, <laughs> I've, I've been wanting to ask you this. <laughs> Will you play pickleball with me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was oh. like, I was oh. <laughs> I've actually got cameras here, here, and here. I filmed this whole thing. <laughs> Shall we update them on our work status? <laughs> We're being bad. Uh-oh. <laughs> we decided to just take the last hour and 15 minutes and go play pickleball. We've been working hard. All of our work doesn't get filmed, and so there is yes. behind the scenes stuff. And it's our first day with our kids back at school. And the weather is the so weather nice. Is so nice. And the pickleball courts are always crowded around here because there's way too many people who want to play and not enough and courts. That's true. Like this is our moment. This is our chance. Let's go see. Hopefully they're not full right now. Oh. If they're full, I'm gonna cry. That would be sad. We will be back to work, ready to work hard tomorrow. Probably. We will. We have okay. to. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow, work. Let's go, baby. So I've got kind of a philosophical question for you, if you're ready for it. So if we stop working on a project, but we keep filming, aren't we still technically working? Even if we're playing pickleball and we're filming it, aren't we technically working? I don't know if I want to ask other people their opinion on the answer to that. That's true. <laughs> I would say yes, because whatever we film, then we also have to edit and produce That's and publish. I, so. I was like, well, the yeah. editing part is work, but I don't think we would call pickleball work, but, oh, oops. Maybe we should start a pickleball channel. Terrible pickleballers. <laughs> Let's hang out. Let's you know? play his wife left-handed because she can't play. <laughs> <laughs> Little early afternoon pickleball sesh. Open courts for days, babe. Get your paddle. Get your paddle. Hashtag worth it. Hashtag <laughs> awesome. That was fun. <laughs> Should we tell him? What? About your first. That I beat you for the first time ever in one game. That's she so beat awesome. me. Heads up. What was the score? Was it? Because we, we are tied. 10, right? We are tied at 10 all. And then she won 12 10. We didn't get all of our games on camera. So that might not be very exciting. But you know, you got to see some little <laughs> highlights of the action in there. But. I took two games, she took one, and we're all smiles, baby. Good vibes, It's huh? so nice outside. Oh, it's Pickleball so is good. so fun, too. Like, you can, like, hit the ball hard, but it doesn't go flying off like tennis. <laughs> if yes. you're not very good at tennis. I'm not very good at tennis. Before we got back to work, we decided to make one more modification to our woodworking area. After building this workbench, we quickly realized that the bottom shelf needed to be a couple inches higher so that it didn't get stuck on every uneven part of the ground. Oh. I like that much of it? Oh yeah. <laughs> For you. I think it might be moving and then Do you need help with that? You are so strong, darling. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm going over there. 
bump on his driveway, not getting stuck. Amazing. <laughs> Worth it? Yeah. <laughs> Once we had the workbench back together, we started bringing out all of our materials so we could get back to work on the cabin. If you ever see a bear coming, you just get one of these <laughs> and you hold it up like this because you want to give them the illusion that you're bigger and taller and more fierce than the bear. And you want to show them your belly button. All right, since I've already cut all of the sides and the fronts of my drawer boxes, next I need to rip down this quarter inch plywood that will slide in for the bottom of the drawer boxes so that I can assemble everything. To rip down the plywood, I first clamped it to my table, then adjusted the blade to go just through the plywood and then used my Craig rip cut guide to cut it to size. What? I think I was supposed to cut the other way on that plywood. Um, I think I know where this is going. <laughs> it's just barely too short. I, I just need leftovers to be the back the back of my cabinet. I messed up. You well, what? I think I did. I don't actually know if there is a right way. I feel like I have a neck brace on. <laughs> it is what it is. Round two. <laughs> Okay, so before I start making a bunch of cuts, I'm gonna go ahead and put a fresh blade on my miter saw. We grabbed one while we were at Lowe's yesterday, just cause I'm gonna have a lot of nice clean cuts that I want to make. This is like the day of maintenance, huh? Mm. Yeah, these are all the things you forget about. I needed to do this a while ago. Once I got the new blade on, I finished cutting the plywood for the bottom of the drawer boxes and man, having a new blade is so nice. Like butter, man, there's like no splinters at all. I just had to double check that it fits. Okay, so I'm ready to start assembling all of the drawer boxes now. I'd previously cut all of the sides for the drawer boxes and then routed the groove for the bottoms to slide into. So now I'm gonna clamp together the first three sides, then we'll slide the bottom in and then I can attach the final piece and our drawer boxes are done. Nice. What? <laughs> These are not one and a quarter inch screws. Is something wrong with my brain? This says one and a quarter inch screws. Yes, let me confirm. It does, correct? These are not one and a quarter inch, right? They look off. That looks way too long. Yeah, that's like They're trying to trick quarter. me here. Two and a half? Two and a half? How does that happen? See if I have any more one and a quarter inch screws that are actually one and a quarter. I do have some, thankfully. Okay. Oh. <gasps> oh, it's beautiful. That's cool, huh? Yeah. Okay, so I'm not gonna glue my final piece here. This will be the back of my drawers. That way if something ever happens to this quarter inch piece, like it gets cracked or I don't know, water or something, then it's really easy to just unscrew this, put a new quarter inch piece of plywood in the bottom and then reattach this. First drawer box done. And then I'll screw my drawer front onto this side. Once I figured out the best way to assemble the first drawer, I repeated the process for the other three drawers. Nice. You've got to be one of the handiest women west of the Mississippi. All right, what's next? Plywood and lunch. That is my specialty. Lowe's trips and lunch trips, <laughs> man. You're going solo today though. Someone's got to stay with the little guys. Can you do Lowe's without me? Slowly, yes. <laughs> I'm going to go make these runs and you're just going to sit in, in the chair. Can I film you from while I sit here? Bye, babe. 
it's nothing cooler than a dad in a minivan, you know? <laughs> Well, I guess now would be the appropriate time to play that theme song. A low strip, a low strip. Every single day it's a low strip. Who says I'm not good at going to Lowe's? I'm a pro. And that's why I'm parking here, ladies and gentlemen. Nah, I'm just kidding. I didn't really park in the pro trailer spot. It's just right next to it and they turn the sign sideways. Looking for plywood in all their own places. Looking for plywood. Oh, that's going to be a tight fit, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give it a go. Come on, Van. Come on, Van. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Van can, baby. Y'all know what I've taught you. Never doubt the minivan. Cause it works every time. And we're off to grab lunch, ladies and gentlemen. Man, it's so stinking beautiful outside. You know what that makes me think of? <laughs> Roll that beautiful pickleball footage. That's what I want to be doing right now, but I'll pick up lunch first. Harissa Avocado is calling my name. Finally got the goods. It took a little while, you know, but I can't complain. It's so beautiful outside. You just gotta say, thank you, Lord! Home sweet home. And this chick's over here sitting on her chair. For real? Are you kidding me right now? I got that massive board and your salad. I was like, what board? And they oh, packed thanks. it on. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Thanks. Look how cute you're looking out here. All right, baby, let's get back to business. All right, so I'm about to start routing grooves that all of my shelves that will go inside the cabinets are going to connect to. This will make a little bit more sense when I show you, but with a little bit of research, I figured out that that is likely the strongest joinery method for plywood that's going to have a butt joint like this. And so- a butt joint. <laughs> we got a new router at Lowe's yesterday because I've been using my router a lot and the little bitty one just doesn't feel quite powerful enough. And I was like, it would be really nice nice to upgrade and this thing is awesome so I have my three quarter inch straight bit in there so I figured out where my shelves are gonna go on this side panel here and I'm going to clamp a straight edge that's going to be my guide for my router to go along is that all you're doing right now that's all I'm doing right now okay so I'm gonna clamp my board right I'm gonna now. clamp my board on there and then and I'm gonna route, route it, it. Yeah. and sometimes I feel like it's hard to explain these things but it'll make sense as you watch it too Let me hear it. <laughs> yes. Once I finished routing the grooves for the shelves on each panel, I quickly sanded the edges for a smooth finish. Look at those clean routed shelf lines. That's where mm -hmm. my shelves are gonna go. Once I finished up my first side panel, I repeated the same process for the rest of the sides. That is until I realized I made a bit of a mistake. What happened here? No, 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 I don't want to have a mess up on this. Well, not all of my boards are going to be left side boards, and I just made three left side boards, and I only need two. Do we have any extras? Oh, you know what? Maybe it won't matter. Well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, ba I'm basically, I'm building like two giant boxes, and then those are going to go together. So I'll have like two plywood panels in the middle. So this could be one of my panels that it'll go in the middle, but now I'm just gonna have to route out the back of it too. Maybe my little router is still set up for that, actually. That would be really convenient. Let's, All hope, right. let's hope that it is. Okay, I just need to think through now like where to make my cuts right, or well, my route, you know what I'm saying. I would say route 66 is probably where you wanna start. Maybe a route 44, diet cherry limeade possibly. Okay, I don't have to buy any more boards. So he's back on the surgery table. Yeah. Okay, careful this time, doctor. 
Do you know where you're making I think the proper so. don't, incision? Don't, don't make me mess up. Thankfully, I only made a mistake on one of the side panels, which meant I could flip it around and simply route out the other side of it. Good as new, baby boo. And this part will be glued up to another panel, so it was already gonna be extra strong anyway. <laughs> After using the leaf blower to blow off my work area, I started putting pocket holes in what would be the top and bottom shelf of the cabinet. Once I was finished making the pocket holes, I used wood glue and screws to attach the top and the bottom shelf of each cabinet. Next, I cut the two middle shelves for the cabinets as they needed to be a little bit longer due to the routed grooves. Then, before assembling everything else, I gave everything a quick sanding with 180 grit sandpaper. After sanding, I finished assembling the first side of the cabinet. All right, so we're gonna pause there for the day. I really could use those clamps to put this second cabinet together, so we're just gonna wait for that to dry and then we'll assemble the next one when we come back and work on it next time. Hey, great progress. Yeah. Great progress, nicely done. It may not look like much, but I feel like a lot of the hard work is done. Yeah. Out. What a day, huh? This is so beautiful. It's like sunny, 60 degrees. Well, there was no wind. Very slight wind. It's oh, really nice. It's just lovely. All right, we're ready to assemble the second cabinet. I'm gonna put some glue in these areas that I've routed out. We're gonna put the shelves in, I'll tap them in. I did grab some corner clamps. I'm gonna see if this helps stabilize it a little bit while we're doing this first part of the assembly. Gosh, I just can't get over how beautiful it is outside. Man, thank you. I'm sure you're going to say how beautiful I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? That's true, too. Just doing my job here. Uh, yeah, I need an extra hand. You need a handsome helping hand, mm -hmm, and you've I got do. one right here. I do. But you just got one hand right now because the other <laughs> one's holding a camera and trying not to shake. I always have a hard time figuring out which way is righty tighty when I'm spinning from the bottom. I oh to, like, yeah. I have to like picture it like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you move that ponytail a little bit? <laughs> Thank you. What is happening here? I changed my mind. I'm trying to figure out the best way to assemble it. I think it'll be a little bit easier maybe with it up like this and I'll just set the other board on top, but I'm gonna need a ladder. <laughs> Ooh, 
These corner clamps are so awesome. I need some more. <laughs> it's so nice out. Feels like a warm, gentle hug. <laughs> it's so nice outside. Days like today make me glad that we're working outside. It no is really doubt. nice. Once we finished assembling the second cabinet, we brought both of them out and it was really exciting to see them starting to take shape. It looks amazing, man. Well, I'll say seeing these actually standing up makes me excited. I'm starting to like catch the vision. You know what I mean? It looks great. Are you catching the vision? Do you see what's happening here? We're on the way. I'm just admiring my little routed shelf here. I've never done that before and I'm feeling pretty proud. You should be proud. <laughs> it's like a simple thing that I feel like I should also say too, like I'm not like a professional woodworker. I'm not trying to sell any of the furniture that we make for like top dollar, but it does feel really good to like dream up an idea in your head and then build it yourself. Even if it is still kind of amateur and has a little bit of mistakes that'll be covered up but I'm getting better. You're a pro in my book. <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> and that's all that matters. Okay, so I'm gonna measure for the quarter inch plywood that I'm gonna slide in for the backs. And when I routed these grooves on the back here, they're about a quarter of an inch deep. And so I'm just gonna measure this and then I'll add a quarter inch, quarter inch, so a half inch. So I've got 34 and a half. I'm gonna do 35 inches wide, probably slightly less than that, just so it's not too tight of a fit. And then I'll do the same thing for my height here. We can cut the plywood, we'll slide it in, put the tops on. All right. After getting a visual on just how big these shelves are going to be once finished, we started seriously questioning if we would be able to move this giant piece of furniture inside by ourselves. You know, can we carry the whole six feet wide thing inside? Because the doorways are like seven feet tall, right? So we could tilt it on its side and carry it in that way. Yeah. I mean, I think part of it's gonna depend on how heavy is it. Well, it won't, it won't have like, we can leave all the drawers out. I'm just doing quarter inch plywood on the back. You know, this will have like a frame on it, but it's not, it's not going to be like. Do you think this will weigh less than the coffee table? Yeah. Well, That's 100%, insane. 100%, yeah. Golly, that wide well, open is heavy. Like, this is like plywood too, and it's, yeah, it's a lot thinner. Okay, I'm actually gonna pull this off and bring over my other piece of quarter inch plywood so I can leave this on the same setting and just rip off the same size piece. Then I don't have to remeasure. And then I'll cut the height to the right height on both of them. After I slid the plywood back in and then tried to attach the top piece, I quickly realized I had made a bit of a mistake. Oh no, this goes on the inside. I made it too tall. Here, can you actually just grab that down? There's screws all on the back side. What's the problem? I just had a little bit of a brain mess up there. So my top piece of plywood sits inside of my side, my like side panels, and I measured my, ply my quarter inch plywood like it was going to sit like this. So it just has three quarter inches of extra. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Thankfully, it's too long, it's not too short. Too short is bad, too long is an easy fix. You know what, I'm just gonna trust her on this one. I'm sure you'll do the same. I'm still smiling, so that's a good thing, right? You uh, measuring it right? Yes, three quarters of an inch shorter because my board's three quarters of an inch lower. Moss gluey. After Andrea corrected her mistake, she was ready to attach the top piece of the cabinet, but it required some strenuous assistance. Get some arm burn. Come on, baby. You don't have to like... Oi. Don't mind me. Am I good? Can I let oh. go? <laughs> No, it's not screwed in, but that's okay. It's okay. Stretch it out. That's a big cabinet. 
Yes, ma'am, it is. I like these tall shelves, that are like how there's more height there. Yeah, so that looks awesome. That is one thing that bothered me about our white shelves is they, they look really good, but there's only like 11 inches or something between each shelf, so there's a lot of things I can't fit. We can fit all my trophies in there, you know. After the first cabinet was finished, I quickly repeated the same process for the second cabinet. Come to Papa. And so the burn begins. I gotta be on my tippy toes. Ah, baby. Nice. My, what large cabinets you have. I'm six feet tall. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember how tall I made them. Like, maybe 88 inches tall? They're pretty tall. Well, I'm 88 inches tall, <laughs> so these have got to be another 25 inches, I would say. What is seven feet? I don't, don't ask me these 84 things. inches, not... so they're a little over seven feet tall. After we finished up the second cabinet, we laid them on their back just in case the wind picked up and then took a lunch break. So where are we going to eat? <laughs> God, where Is that a real question? Probably not. I may sneak some Italian food from across the way. Baby, this is where we part ways. And I need some Italian food. Yes. I got the Italian dish. She got the Mediterranean salad. Oh, oh that was so, so good. That was so good, baby. So after our quick lunch break, I had an exciting idea for how to finish off our work day. All right, before we get started, I have a challenge of sorts. I get one shot, and if I make it, we cut work for the rest of the day and go play pickleball. We take a blanket, go lay out in the sun. One <laughs> shot for the marbles. What do you think? My face, I'm back here going. <laughs> Sounds good to me. You better make that shot, though. You better make it. Please don't break the furniture, though, because we're going to go from less work to more work. I'll be shocked if you make it, though. I'm going to be honest. Oh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You get one shot, too. I, from see, where? I, from here? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think I can throw it that far. Come on, baby. For all the marbles. Yes! I, I miss, how did I make that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, but are we really going to quit? For the well, upon further review, <laughs> we decided to be responsible adults and continue work for the day. It would have been a lot easier if you hadn't made it. <laughs> I was shocked. <laughs> like when you made it, I was like, we're going. And then, you know, you talk about, well, if we don't get going, I mean, we may not finish this week. And then it's like, we're probably yeah. still not going to finish this week. You get some food. But... Okay, we're back from lunch. Next thing I'm going to do is add a support piece with some of the scrap plywood that I have left over to the bottom. So I'll just cut that the same width as my shelves just to add stability to the bottom and you won't see it. But then after that, I can add some iron on edge banding and we'll start to building the face frames around the front. That really was an incredible shot though. I think Dude Perfect called and they would like to have you on their team. Um, Cause you made a shot from an entire like 20 feet away. So they could probably use- With a use, flat basketball. You know what they're gonna call you now? Dudette Perfect. Golly, the 
fresh blade, it cuts it so clean. If you're like us and the only place you have is Home Depot or Lowe's to shop for your, all your woodworking stuff, I think the Diablo blades are the best. They're just so nice. They're more expensive, but you get what you pay for. Okay, so next I'm gonna put this iron-on edge banding on the pieces of plywood that are gonna be exposed. And the only ones that are gonna be exposed and not have my one by two face frame on it are these two middle shelves that will go inside my cabinet. So four of those, I'm gonna measure these out, mark them, cut them with scissors, and then iron them on with the iron. After finishing up the edge banding, it was finally time to attach these two cabinets together. Is this the biggest piece of furniture you've ever made? Probably. Yeah. Yes, I, I think so. All right, it is already time to pick up our kids, and so Dean is gonna go get them, and we're gonna set up a time lapse while I start putting together the face frame for this entire cabinet. For the face frames, I used a one by four across the bottom, and then one by twos for all of the rest, and I simply used a ton of wood glue and then brad nails to hold everything in place. Hug, I missed you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, kissy boos. <laughs> I want some of those. <laughs> Somebody had a tummy bug over the weekend, so I'm like, oh. <laughs> 15 minutes, 27 hugs, and four snacks later, we're back on the job for a few more minutes. Ah! I. It keeps doing that. I'm like. <laughs> It's like this red oak is hard. It's a lot harder than pine, so it's not going to come out. Ah! What, like, what do I do about that? After getting the kids all settled in, we had a little bit of work left, and we were quickly joined by some of our favorite little helpers. It's like you got a new apprentice. It's ready. <laughs> so where you're standing is going to be the drawers. Mm. Like two big drawers on each side. And then this part, I'm going to build some glass. I'm going to build some doors that are going to have glass in the middle of it. My drawer. Like You're a drawer. Yeah. As Andrea continued working, I decided to take a trampoline break with our son. Hey, G man, you want to jump on trampoline? Let's do it. Let's see how high we need to bounce. You ready? Nice. Ready? Nice. Let's try it again. Ready? Yeah. Oh. One more. One. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A little strange. The last thing I did before calling it quits for the day was give everything a good sanding so we could bring it inside later that evening. After dinner and getting the kids ready for bed, we finally brought this thing inside and it was quite the task. So we're supposed to move this beast with those two little baby dollies? Oh baby! This is so big. She's removing all the doormats and opening all the doors. And I'm waiting patiently. Nice night though, huh? are in. DNA movers. 
on the move. Are we all the way down? Is this a little too close for comfort? And I guess I should have backed up the camera like another two feet maybe, I don't know. What you think, darling? I like it. Now I'm like, I wanna build the drawers, stain it, get the drawers done. I'm ready to finish it, I'm motivated. You are all kinds of motivated over no here. No lunch breaks tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm just kidding. Wait a minute, what happened in here? <laughs> You're styling. I couldn't resist. No, you could not. Just had to give it a look, huh? <laughs> Let's stick to the build first, right? And then we'll do the styling <laughs> later. It. Okay? Yeah. That's your tape measure. It's a new work week and I am so excited to get started and make some more progress on this cabinet. What are we measuring for? <laughs> the glass doors. Glass doors? You about to outdo yourself. <laughs> You kind of got a thing for glass front doors, huh? I just like for people to see how much she thinks about these things. How much brain power. Andrea brain power. Got it? Yeah, I think so. All right, so we actually need to run back to Lowe's because I need some more oak one by twos. And technically I didn't buy too little but I did know that some of the boards were a little bit warped and they warped a little bit worse just sitting in our garage and now I don't have enough really straight boards left to build my cabinet doors but such is our project life <laughs> we go to Lowe's you know a good solid once a day maybe even twice who knows I have actually already been to Lowe's and Home Depot today <laughs> Right there. <laughs> you gotta close one eye. You gotta close one eye. <laughs> yeah. No cart for me. So right. God, we it's so nice outside. This nice. How is this? How has it been so nice these last few days? I mean, it's too good. It's too lovely outside. Put these in the back of the truck. Ready. Let's go. Where to now? <laughs> Just a little lunch break, maybe. Yep. Thanks, ma'am. For you, ma'am. What are you doing back there? After we got back from lunch, we started by removing the old shelves that were still attached to the wall. That was hard. I still really love the style of these white shelves, but I do feel like this new cabinet will fit the space even better. One, two, three! After sliding the new cabinet in place, I was ready to go outside and get started on the doors, but I made an unfortunate discovery. <gasps> They blew off. I put these out here this morning. Shoot. They blew off what? This. Are you serious? They blew off the workbench? Yeah, it was really windy this morning. Hey, they're like totally fine. It's because they're built by a professional, sort of. All right, so we're finally gonna be making the doors and since I've already measured everything, step one is going to be to cut all of my one by twos for that. Okay, so for all of my long sides of my doors, I went ahead and set up the stop at that end. So now that I've measured one and got that set up, I can just set each board down and get all those done quick. After cutting all of the long boards for the doors, I moved on to cutting all of the boards for the short sides. Next, I started adding pocket holes to each end of all of the short boards. Okay, 
Okay, so these are the hinges I'm gonna be using on my cabinet doors, and as you can see, they are a little bit thicker than what I want my gap to be around my doors, and so I'm gonna use my router with my straight three-quarter inch bit on it. I'm gonna mark where this goes and then set up boards to block my router to where I can just route out a section for this, and I'm gonna do all four boards at one time because I'll have four outside edges of my doors that will have the hinges on them, and that'll just be a little bit more efficient, and then they'll all be exactly placed in the same spot on each board. The other side now? Yep. Next, it was time to start assembling the doors. I used wood glue and then securely clamped it in place before screwing it together. After finishing the first door, I took it inside just to make sure it fits. How are you so cool? <laughs> can you hold this so I can look at it? Yeah. The bookcase gets a lot cooler when it has glass doors on it. <laughs> After verifying that the first door did indeed fit, I repeated the same process for door number two. And then I brought them both inside to make sure they both fit together. Perfect. This is just me being like paranoid and rather than building four doors and realizing I made a slight mistake on the width, I was like, let's just double check before we do them all. Great idea. Love it. All right, so more assembling now? More assembling. Once I was sure that the doors were the right size, I followed the same process for doors number three and four. All right, so we have all four doors built. Next step will be to route out the back for the glass. So I've got my router here with the rabbiting bit on it. I clamp the door onto the work table. So I'll do like half the door, flip it around, clamp it, and then do the other half and do that to all four doors. And then we're gonna go install them after that. Oh Look no. <laughs> wow. That thing kicks off some dust, huh? I think I need to wash it. Other half now? Yep. Look at these professional doors. You're so pro. <laughs> My goodness. I'm sure that'll buy me lots of comments on how it's not really professional. I'm feeling pretty proud of it. After I finished routing out the back of all four doors, I grabbed my sander to give everything a good sanding. After I finished sanding all of the doors, we brought them inside so we could start installing them. I started by attaching a pair of black hinges to two of my doors and then grabbed Dean's help so I could attach them to the cabinet. Whoa. The next day, I was ready to get started installing all of the drawers, but the weather was not cooperating with us. We tried not to get wet, I didn't work. <laughs> hey, we left the garage door open. Is that gonna be an issue? <laughs> nah, we'll leave it. All right, so we're getting ready to install all of the drawers. There'll be two big ones on this side, two on this side, and step one is gonna be to get our drawer slides installed in here. You can see I have these spacer boards 
because my face frame on this side sticks out and I want my panel on the inside, I want my drawer slide to be flush with the edge of this. But on this side, since I did the two pieces of plywood together, it's the same thickness as my face frame, so I won't need any space around that side. So I'm gonna drill some pilot holes in here and then attach these on the left side here and then on the far side over there. First, I drilled pilot holes on my spacer boards and then measured and marked where I wanted to attach them. Go get different screws from the garage. Having a slow brain moment, I didn't think about using my little pocket hole screws. They just, they stick out and I need one that is flush. I'm gonna go grab different screws. <laughs> okay, so I actually didn't have any other screws that were the right length. Most of mine are just barely too long because I don't want it to poke out this side. I have about an extra quarter inch screw, so I'm gonna take them out and then use a bigger drill bit so that I can countersink them just so they'll be flush with the surface. That's faster than making a trip to Lowe's. <laughs> Once I had my spacer boards attached and the screws flush, I was ready to install my drawer slides. Once I got the first drawer slide attached, I moved over to the other side and attached one at the same height, and this is definitely easier with a second set of hands to help. <laughs> Got it. After attaching all of the main part of the drawer slides into the cabinet box, I moved on to attaching the smaller portion to the sides of the drawer boxes. No way. Do it again. Do it again. Pretty sturdy. Do it again. Probably not sturdy enough for our kids. Whoa, magic. Once I had the first drawer box on this side attached, I repeated the same process for the second one. After I finished installing the drawer boxes on the left side of the cabinet, I moved on to the other side, starting with drilling the pilot holes for the spacer boards. Careful. How was that on the old ear hole? Once I had the spacer boards attached, I opened up my drawer slides and started attaching them the same way that I did on the other side. And once again, this is much easier with a second set of hands. Is that all the drawer slides? Mm-hmm. I gotta attach them to the boxes now. Oh my goodness, bless you darling. Again, once I finished attaching all of the drawer slides to the larger portion of the cabinet, I attached the smaller part of the drawer slides to the drawer boxes themselves. Yes. That was nice. Magic is on. That's really fun to do that. One more. Look at that. Should you have the same time ready? Yes. Double magic. That's kind of fun. <laughs> Do you think this is going to be like a family heirloom or anything? Like, a, really, it could be. Like, our grandkids could talk about this and be like, I have grandma's my cabinet. Grandma, my grandma built this. <laughs> Not just grandma's cabinet. Grandma yeah, yeah, built yeah. this. <laughs> grandma built this, grandchildrens. Grandpappy was cheering her along the whole time. What you got there? Hardware. Look how cute they are. Ooh, I like. <laughs> I needed something small for the doors because that's not a very wide part. And I think it would just look bad with something bulky on there. I've used these in a lot of projects and I like them. They're so heavy and they're inexpensive. These are from Amazon. Nice. I got a giant box because I actually have another piece of furniture I'm going to build. Maybe. You're building another piece of furniture? Yeah, I'm really, I'm, I'm inspired and I'm excited about that one. You're really letting the cat out of the bag here. I am. In order to attach my drawer fronts, I first needed to drill the holes for the hardware and so I started by placing my hardware to get a visual on where I wanted them to be. Once I figured out where I wanted the hardware placed, I measured and marked on each of the drawer fronts. Oh, 
All right, so I'm gonna try a little trick attaching the drawer fronts, and I've actually already marked out and then drilled a hole for where my hardware's gonna go, and then I'm actually gonna use those holes to then screw into the box. See, hopefully it's as easy as it is in my head. To attach the bottom drawer front, I used some scrap pieces of cardboard that I had laying around to hold the board up at the right height. There are a lot of different things you could use for this spacing, but this is what I had on hand and it worked great. Are you satisfied? Yeah, this is how I keep myself motivated. I gotta stop and enjoy it. Well, it's looking good, baby. It's looking good. Once I finished attaching the drawer fronts on the left side, I moved on to the other side, starting with measuring and marking for my hardware holes. Well done. Mm -hmm. Yes. How are you feeling so far? I'm pleased with my work. <laughs> I am also like, that's going to take a long time to stain that thing. <laughs> Just think family heirloom, grandchildren. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Should we take a lunch break now? Yes. <laughs> Look at that hair, would you? My goodness, look at this. Okay, so last thing I need to do before we start getting ready to stain is put some more edge banding around the plywood drawer fronts on here, just so when you open them, they look nice and clean. After I finished applying edge banding to one drawer, I took a piece of sandpaper and sanded all of the edges and the corners. What you eating? Gummy bears. Gummy bears? I want some. This is like a good way to start off the project with some gummy snacks. All right, what are we doing today, Brian? We'll probably get as far as like vacuuming and cleaning it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first we need to get the piece really cleaned off. I blew all the dust off outside, but there's still a good bit of sawdust on it. So I'm gonna vacuum it all with our shop vac. And then I actually bought Ruby Monocoat's wood cleaner. It's supposed to get the sawdust off a little bit better. Ruby Monocoat says don't use mineral spirits. And so we're gonna try it out. Before I got started, I decided to pull all of the drawers out and then started vacuuming everything with my shop vac. That's heavy. Alright, so I'm trying out the Rubio Monocoat Cleaner because I'm going to be using their products again for the cabinet. It's not sponsored, I just, I really loved using it for the coffee table. Plus, it doesn't stink like a lot of oil-based stains do. The way the Rubio Monocoat oil works is it actually molecularly bonds with the wood, so you don't want it bonding with little particles of sawdust on there. So it is important that you have a good, clean surface. Molecularly bonds? <laughs> Unreal. 
Look how dirty that is. That's crazy. No way. Look at all that molecular bonding happening. <laughs> this is not molecularly bonding. But, oh. but I don't want all that left on my piece before I stain it. All right, so I'm gonna start by staining the outside of the piece. The inside of the cabinets are gonna be a different color, and so I'm gonna tape off just around this edge here. I might use some plastic to cover the shelves just in case I drip. So we'll do this, and then we'll get that first coat of color because I'm actually gonna be doing similar to what I did for our coffee table and using what is called a pre-color easy to get a really saturated dark color on the outside. Taping is one of those parts of a project that always takes way more time than I think that it will, but it is 100% necessary in this case. finished masking off the entire inside of the cabinet, I went ahead and propped the entire thing up on scrap wood to make staining the bottom edge easier. I lifted that. You're so strong. <laughs> I do feel really strong after dinner. Do you need help? <laughs> wow, superwoman. <laughs> I'm really good at asking for help. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna stain the outside of this piece black. I just, I really thought that the dark saturated black wood color would look awesome in here, but I love that it's a stain so we'll still see the wood grain. But the best option for like a deep black wood stain that I have ever seen is with Rubio Monaco and you use the intense black pre-color and then use their black oil plus 2C on top of that. So this will be step one. I did go ahead and get one of their ap applicator pads last time I made an order with them just cause think it would make it easier so we'll see so I'm not really sure the best way to get it onto all my vertical surfaces which is actually every surface that I'm gonna be doing this on <laughs> normally like I did with the coffee table you pour it and you can use like kind of a little squeegee to wipe it around and then use the this to really spread it and get it in but I hope this is not like a huge headache it could be so I'm gonna try pouring it on here it'll be a little bit of trial and error because I haven't had to do vertical surfaces like All right, so I ended up cutting off a little bit of my applicator pad and I'm just doing this whenever I need more. And that is actually working really well. I think because I'm doing a lot of really small surfaces with the one by twos that this big pad was just, it was just too big. That I'd probably waste a lot of product, but this is working great. About this time, I started realizing just how massive this project really was. And so I grabbed some headphones, turned on an audio book and just kept working. After more time than I anticipated, I finally finished staining the front of the cabinet. <sighs> From there, I grabbed the larger applicator pad and moved on to staining the sides of the cabinet. After that, I moved on to staining the drawer fronts. And then finally, I came back with a small paintbrush to get some of the inside corners and the areas that were hard to reach with the applicator pad. Once I finished everything, I put the drawers back in and we let it dry overnight. Okay, so we've let all of this dry overnight. It's good and dry, so it's time for the final coat, and that is the Rubio Monaco Oil Plus 2C. And I will go ahead and note, you can use this by itself. You don't have to do the easy pre-color. I just wanted a really, really saturated black, and so that's why I did the pre-color the way I did it. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this all over the black, and then we'll focus on the inside so I can pull all the plastic stuff off. Ooh. Is that a bunch of coffee in there? It looks <laughs> like a cup of coffee or something in there. Or oil. <laughs> I applied the Oil Plus 2C the same way that I applied the pre-color, and this provides a little bit more color as well as a protective finish. 
Again, this step was very necessary, but it was definitely a long and tedious task. I tried to work in smaller sections that I could thoroughly cover and then wipe off within 15 minutes. Look at the difference between like the oil side and the knot. It's like so velvety smooth. It's velvet, can you describe a wood finish as velvety? I would say so. It looks really nice. All right, so we've let this oil plus 2C dry and I'm ready to stain the inside. I'm actually gonna use the Rubio Mono Coat pre-color again and then I'll probably use a wax or something as my top coat. I have a color that I like in the pre-color easy, which is like, it's not the all-in-one product like the oil plus 2C, but. Where are you going with this? I'm gonna mix a couple of colors <laughs> and I'm gonna put it all on the inside of the cabinet and then we're gonna let that dry and then we'll figure it out after that. That sounds like a plan, let's do it. Okay, I'm mixing these two colors. I've got vintage brown and smoked brown, but I have a lot more of the vintage brown, so I'm gonna mix in more of the vintage brown because I wanna make sure I mix enough for the entire cabinet because I don't have any more of this. And I've got my massive container of the vintage brown. You pour the Hershey's chocolate into the cup. Stir in your coffee. With a little popsicle stick that I got out of the craft stuff. Do you like your coffee dark or what? Once I finished mixing my stain, I went ahead and removed all of the tape and plastic. I started applying the stain with an old brush I had on hand and then wiped away the excess using a lint-free rag. You're a third of the way done. How's that arm feeling? It's burning. <laughs> like forever I was finished staining the cabinet. That's it. My arms are toast. All right. Are you pleased with progress so far? Mm-hmm. It looks so much better. It was throwing me off having the raw wood inside of it. I was starting to second get my, guess my choices there. But it looks really good. I like it a lot. So uh, what's happening now? If I didn't know any better, I'd say it looks like you're ordering lunch. I am. I'm down. All right. She's excited. What are we doing? Hardware and staging and we have 20 minutes till we have to leave to pick up the kids. Wait, staging? Dean says I can't do hardware in 20 minutes. I think I can do hardware and staging. So let me get no. started. So messy. It is messy, man. Did I just scratch my forehead? What happened there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before I can take these screws out to put the hardware in those holes, I need to add some screws from the inside to attach the this without these screws. <laughs> oh, that makes total sense. That was hard to say. Okay, if everything would just go like it's supposed to go, I would be able to get this done. But these are too long for my doors and they're too short for the drawers because I'm going through two layers of plywood. So they're just barely too short. So I'm gonna drill just a little bit so I can sink these in and have them be long enough. <laughs> So Andrea has left the house to go to the garage and look for shorter screws. I quit. <laughs> I'm not trying to say I won or anything. It's not a competition. I just... Dang it! 
and wondering when you're gonna figure out that construction takes longer than what's written on the paper. That's that's the if only thing. If I had thing. the right length screws, I, I could have done this. Cause I already have them like, the hard part is done on the drawer. They're marked already. Well, we're out of time. And I'm gonna go pick up the kids from school. I was wrong. <laughs> and you're gonna go get screws from Lowe's, is that correct? Uh-huh. Okay, well let's put the camera down and let's hurry. And then we can come back and finish this. And then we'll come back, yes. Can, can, like can, I, can I put all the pretty stuff in the cabinet after that? <laughs> yes, I guess. All right, I'm back with shorter screws. Got the kids from school. Let's try this again. I feel like I want to time it and just see if I can do this in 20 minutes. <laughs> I feel like I can. <laughs> Once I attached the drawer fronts with some screws from the inside, I was able to remove the screws that were in my hardware holes on the outside and then screw all the way through the drawer front and the drawer box. I got this hardware from Amazon and if you've been around for a while, you might recognize this from our big closet makeover as well as our bedroom furniture. Everyone always says this, but adding hardware to a piece really is like adding jewelry because it takes it to that next level and it is finally starting to come together. All right, now that our stain is completely dry, we're ready for staging, which is probably the part of this project that I have been looking forward to the most, if you can't tell, because as Dean pointed out, I like to stage a little bit here and there along the way just to get a good look. So this is so exciting. <laughs> Was staging everything you dreamed it would be? Oh yeah. I'm just gonna be sitting right here, staring. <laughs> it changes it so much, it's crazy. It looks so much better with stuff in it. Once I finished decorating the inside of the cabinet, I went ahead and removed the doors so we could install the glass. All right, so I've got all of the doors off, so it's time to start putting the glass in them. All right, I also wanted to go ahead and point out that if you are trying to attempt this yourself, most glass companies will actually round the corners of your glass because when you use a router, you're not getting a little corner, you know, a sharp corner, and you can come in, you can chisel a square corner and keep your glass square, but that is a lot of extra work, and most of what I've seen the professionals do, or at least every time we've had glass cabinets installed by an actual cabinet company, they rounded the glass and it is so much easier. So. That's what I did, and it looks great. All right, so thankfully the glass all fits, but I thought I had clear silicone on hand, and I don't have any, or I can't find it, so we're gonna run and grab some of that. I'm also gonna grab some little glazier points, although I think most of the ones that Home Depot and Lowe's have in stock here locally are not very good, but I'm gonna try them, see if they work, but silicone is also enough, so we'll grab some of that, and we'll come back and actually get these installed. It's so cold out here. It is really cold. And rainy. Wet. Warm it up, buttercup. It's so cold out here. It's cold. <laughs> I've got my warmest jacket. You do too. You got your poofy jacket on. Ooh, let's get one of those. Yours for only $9.99.99. All 
All right, we're back. We've got our stuff from Lowe's. I got some of these Glacier Points, which I was gonna try, but unfortunately, like all of the reviews said, they are absolute garbage, and as soon as you try and press them in or tap them in, they just bend. I'm sure you can get higher quality ones elsewhere, but that's all that Lowe's and Home Depot had. Thankfully, silicone is enough to hold it in place, and so we're just gonna stick with silicone. We'll have to wait for it to dry before we can install them, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Once I had applied silicone all the way around, I wiped off the excess using my finger and a paper towel. All right, I've got all the silicone on. My glass was cut just a little bit smaller than I wanted it, and so I needed a pretty substantial bead of caulk around some of the edges because there's a gap. But we've got to let this dry until tomorrow, and then we'll reinstall the doors, and then that cabinet will be finished, right? That's it? Yeah. That's crazy. I can't wait to see the doors with the glass in them on because I feel like that's, again, going to like totally change the feel of it. All right, are you ready to put the glass doors on today? I am. What in the world? You got an early start. I thought we were supposed to film that. I just started thinking, you know, I wonder if I could put one on by myself, and it turns out I can. <laughs> I did it last night, and you just noticed. Okay, this Typical. Is <laughs> this is becoming a problem. It is. I'm sorry. We have three more. You can film the other three. Oh, they're so much heavier with glass. I need your help. All right, so final step is to install these little magnetic latches. Some of my doors are a little bit warped, so this will keep them closed, but also it'll help just keep them totally straight since these are really tall doors, just that little bit of warp, you can tell a little bit. And so last step, and then we're done with this cabinet. Well, man, how good does this cabinet look? So much hard work went into this thing and it has paid off. It is absolutely gorgeous. Good work. Again. Yeah, I absolutely love how this cabinet turned out. I had a couple of moments along the way where I was like, oh, did I make the right decision when I just had the black and then there was still like the pink red oak in the inside and I was like, that is looking a little bit out of place. But now that it's finished, it looks 
so good and I cannot believe how long this took us. We started this, technically we bought supplies before Thanksgiving. Now we didn't work on it obviously solid that whole time, but here we are, we finally finished it. And I've already said this, but I really do think this could be a family heirloom. Like I'm not just kidding, like our kids, maybe even our grandkids could look and go, oh funny. granny made this, I want that in my house. You know what I'm saying? It's incredible. So that's all from this incredible cabinet build. Thanks for coming along for the ride. And we have some very exciting projects coming up, so we'll catch you in the next episode. Like what? Like that, like yeah. What? <laughs> Well, man, how- Wait, no, I'm not ready. I'm sorry, I'm still looking oh, at you. Okay. Maybe put your hands out when they're like this. Hey guys, it's Dean. I'm down here on a secret filming mission. <laughs> I don't know if you can see me in the time lapse. There's a camera right there. So I'm trying to say out of that shot, but get this shot, you know, <laughs> hashtag cameraman duties. And if I mix too little, we're gonna be waiting on this to come in the mail. Uh, every time I say stuff like that, I always think, I hope this isn't one of those parts where you put foreshadowing on the screen. <laughs> Whoa. We are stuck in the parking lot. Could be going inside, but we are I'm having us another, another design debate. She likes I can't some get chairs. Off, I can't get off. Of I don't other, like the project. chairs. <laughs> My opinion doesn't really matter. Well, it does. Your opinion does matter. It Dean doesn't matter. Dean is so awesome. I'm so thankful because design is what I love, and he always defers to my opinion on it. Always. But I do listen to your opinion, and I'm also like, I don't want him to not like what I'm doing. She never listens to me. <laughs> it's really an act of service on my part because a lot of people call me Designer Dean, but I don't try to push that in our relationship. I just put that aside. I lay that down so that she can do her thing. You know, I'm just trying to be supportive really, but. Yeah, I don't try and edit the videos for you, even though I'm probably better at editing than you are. <laughs> But sometimes, and filming, and filming. I'm definitely better at filming. You know what? Let's just go into Lowe's. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Sardine. <laughs> We're back with Sardine, man! Sardine! Yeah, maybe we just nix all of the other projects and just get a camper. Back at it again. <laughs> this is what happens when you have two, like, ADD workers. Oh. Mid-project, we're like... Huh? What if huh? we just do huh? this project what? that's what? six what? months Squirrel? from now instead? Oh, a nine footer. Very helpful. Yes, nine footer. You need any nine footers? Let's measure the next one. What? Oh, a ten footer. Are you making a basketball goal? Six feet. I'd say that's a six one easy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Can I stop recording? So Andrea has this thing where she hates it. Whenever no, I, you whenever I try and, yourself, dude, whenever you're stupid middle school boy, like, well, I don't even know. I don't even want to call it a dance move. Like, it's not when we have cameras on. This is like when we have cameras off. Stop if I start like, like doing good. this, she Stop. cannot handle it at all. She just squirms. It's cringy. I think it's hilarious. It feels I'm just like an embarrassing middle school boy. That's what it feels like. Like who's like trying to be really cool, but they're really not. And for some reason, seeing you do that really does make me cringe. Like, and I'm like, please stop for real. It's not funny to me. Hey, I'm just trying to make you gonna film yourself doing that and put it on the internet, babe. You know what? I'm gonna show y'all how I do it right here, right yeah. now. Oh no, no! <laughs> you can't put that on the internet for people to see. Oh. So the hilarious thing about this, I'm not on social media. I never post on social media, but you've seen it. You've seen everybody trying to look uber cool. But when I do that, Andrea literally loses her mind. She just can't handle it, right? I think it's so stupid. I think we should do it together. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, work with me. I'm going to post this on the gram. Can you stop? I'm going to post this on the gram. Stop being stupid. <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a couple of goons. Can you get it? Oh, you got like, they got that and you got lettuce in between the middle Babe, teeth. <laughs> now close your teeth because I put the black thing on your teeth. Now you just put it right there. What? Just get your tongue on there, babe. Clean them all off. Let me see. Much better. You need a floss though. <laughs> but cave, are you a dentist or something? No, but you need to floss. You know what, let's get back to work, you goober. <laughs> <laughs> when I go to Lowe's, they call it slows. <laughs> Ha <laughs>
Yeah. And that was the worst joke I've You're ever You're so funny. Made. All your jokes come out on camera. Are you building like stuff for a Star Wars set? We have a kid hiding on the couch under a blanket. <laughs> Quiet. That is a child. He's taking right his right finger here. through a hole in the blanket. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be belting the Darth Gosh! That's hard to say, man. It's say tongue it? twister. It's like seashell, seashells by the seashore. And I didn't even. She sells seashells by the seashore. Fuzzy wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy wuzzy had no hair. Fuzzy Stop wuzzy was a fuzzy wuzzy. Ooh. Nailed it. Okay. I love mm. you. <laughs> I got like. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you were going to like. Turn I turned into the wrong it, way. <laughs> and we just kind of rammed each other there. Yeah, I was. You're so pokey. I was trying to have a moment. I haven't seen your chin in so many years. <laughs> <laughs> Could you put your fingers in front of my face just to Oh, oh I was like, why do you want my fingers in To front imagine of what it would look oh. like. I don't think that helps. I was thinking more something <laughs> oh. like. Got a little helper yeah, down here. Yeah, that's super helpful. Oh, I mean, cameraman. you can basically <laughs> see exactly what it'd look like without a goatee. Yeah. This is pretty much just a hair shot. <laughs> you're having a great hair day. <laughs> what a hair day you're having, <laughs> babe. I mean, would you look at this? Oh, that went right in between there. You need to watch what you're doing there.